What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? I'm Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with No Labels Necessary coming to you every Tuesday and Thursday. Appreciate yep, yep. y'all, appreciate y'all, appreciate y'all for thugging it out again. Yet another episode. We here together. As a matter of fact, we got a comment that I got to address. <laughs> you know, got to address this real, real quick, Corey. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this name, so forgive me if I say it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you right i'm just gonna put it on the screen for y'all who wonder like what what the hell is sean talking about i appreciate your comment <laughs> he said my favorite part about the podcast is the fact that they are doing it in the middle of the desert this <laughs> the sandstorm give gives the studio a live feel i've never experienced before hey man look <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, you know, being clever when you show love and insult us at the same time. But uh, that was one of the more uh, one of the more creative comments. So y'all keep getting creative. We, if y'all want to critique us, if y'all give us that level of creativity, we definitely gonna throw it, <laughs> <laughs> throw it in the pie and talk about it a little bit. Y'all make sure you part of the show. Yeah, yeah, make, make sure you, you part of the show. <laughs> definitely make you part of the show, and not just those. You know, y'all got real good questions and things like that. Well, we'll we pay attention in the comments. Anything like that, we we're, we're gonna figure out if we can make it into an episode. So yep, y'all yep, keep yep. keep staying engaged and let us know what y'all want to see. But starting out, what we got? We got some advice for y'all. All right, not advice from us. We got advice. From none other than Barry Hefner. If y'all don't know Barry Hefner, Jacory, tell him tell him who Barry is. Yeah, so he's one of the the, the founders of since the eighties, which is I know they're they're mainly in the management, managing like J I D Earth Gang. Um I can't think of I don't know how to say her name, but the, the artist's name is like N J Z O M A, something like oh, that. Oh yeah, I don't know yeah, how to say it. Yeah, I don't know how to say it either. But yeah, pretty much but he's like a superstar manager out here, you know what I'm saying? From homegrown in Atlanta and someone we be looking at for, you know, some some inside information here and there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, um, I think this is actually the second time we've actually talked about something from Barry on the pod. I think there was one episode where we were supposed to talk about something from him, maybe. I don't know if we got to it. I remember it was on the list, though. I don't I know if we like, got to it. I feel like we got to it. If so, that makes him like the first person we've addressed or talked about twice yeah. so fast in, in so few episodes. Yeah, you be dropping things for you, let, man. Let, let you know the game. So y'all <laughs> go follow Barry and let him, let him know who we, we sent y'all. You know what I'm saying? No labels necessary. But uh, Barry says, so I have this method that I use when developing an artist that may be old or new Who's, who knows, but I call the, I, let me start this over. <laughs> I have this method I use when I, when developing an artist that may be old or new, who knows, but I call it the inside out theory. So I'll explain. The inside out theory is like this. I'll advise all artists to think of their career as a house or a piece of property. All right, y'all, y'all use that imagination, whatever house. Close your eyes, get yeah. into it. Close your eyes, get into it. Let's <laughs> meditate on this. Now, next slide. Most artists today love to focus on just the inside of their homes described in this image below. Recording. Mm. Number two, their image. Mm. Number three, strategy. Number four, research. Number five, social media, and number six, practicing, which I assume, you know, practicing their craft of music, all right? Now, he gives a picture, this beautiful picture of inside of a home and social media is like the couch, the image is the side of the couch, the practicing is like the floor mat. You could put it anywhere throughout the house, but he just goes further with the image if y'all don't see the screen. Now, next, all right? Artists fail to focus on the outside of their homes, which is number one, execution. Two, showmanship. All right, that's different than what y'all normally practice in just the music. That's the entertainment on mm -hmm. stage, right? Number three, networking. Mm. Number four, confidence. Mm. That's very interesting. We got to address that one day. <laughs> number five, likability. Number six, charisma. Mm. Yeah, we yeah we definitely actually gonna deep, dive deeper in this. I like this. Now, <laughs> did, did he puts these things on the outside of the house, right? Execution is one of the windows. Showmanship's a part of the uh, the structure. Networking is near the foundation. All that stuff, right? That's the outside of the house. Now, here he goes. The thoughts behind this method is 
to build the thoughts behind this method is to build the ideal home or career. You must first start with the foundation. Let that balance between the inside and outside by only focusing on one. You can have success, but you can't achieve superstar status without properly doing both. I think I instantly agree. Right. Yeah. Anybody doing both yeah. like or anybody as a superstar definitely has both. Yeah. hundred percent. Easy, easy. So then the last image, right. Inside and outside. Now he, he this is like a flex. It's like a mansion or something, right? <laughs> so you had a house when you were focused on the inside. You had a decent little house when you focused on the outside. But you're doing both. Hey, you you, you got that. You got square footage, baby. Yeah, so it's crazy. You you in here? All right. So last couple of statements. The issues I see arising with the business is artists and their team are so hyper focused on one aspect of the grind and how it looks versus the grind and what it takes. Mm-hmm. I could go on for days and days about this. You know, I actually thought this was A-B testing when I first read it. (laughs) Days and days about this. But the point is, take care of your home from the inside to the outside if you want to keep it. Bam. That's it. So, Ja'Cory. One, the same question I'm going to ask everybody else out there. What do y'all think about this analogy you think it fits anything are there any holes in it is it good what's up can, can you go back to the the second the second slide real quick where he talks about the i think it's the inside of the house inside i think it's a good analogy like it, it definitely painted the picture for me i didn't know what was going the first time i read it i was like it's like a house i was like what do you know right like, no but it, it by the time i got through it he, he won you over yeah it won me over the the only one that i guess kind of confused me is like research because I don't understand. I, don't, I mean, I'm guessing like he means like artists. I guess researching more the music industry, looking into what needs to be done. But to me, I could, that would fall in. I don't know. Maybe that would come before a strategy to me. I might be nitpicking with it, but that might just be me. I would. I would like clarity on that one because yeah. I, I wasn't sure if maybe he was talking about like maybe I'm just researching the landscape because he said the artists and their team, right? Yeah. All right. So. Maybe researching like where I want to place my music, stuff like that. I, I mean, that still falls into marketing. Would probably be a little bit more of an outside. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that one is a little bit unclear for sure, for yeah, sure. But I mean, the the points he touched on though, a hundred percent right. Like all this stuff on the screen right now is priority number one for most artists. Yeah. Like, yeah. Make sure them. Let me make sure the music is straight. Let me make sure I look like an artist. Right. Let me strategize a homo blow up in 90 days like all this is 100 percent like priority number one i think for like 90 percent of artists right. can, you, can you go to the other one real quick he breaks down the, the inside of the house okay this shit all of this shit to me is not even second thought for most artists usually third thought hey this is where the reality of the game yeah. sets in yeah it kicks in yeah and i think <laughs> now that i par- uh, connected with that last statement right grinding what did he said he said People focus on the grind and how it looks versus the grind and what it takes, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. So a lot of that number two, that outside is definitely what it takes, right? Yeah. Whatever it takes to execute to get there. But we talk about that showmanship to yeah. really build the fan base, not just have people show up because you got a, a popping song. Yeah. Right? So they know they're going to get a good show. Yeah. They know they're going to get a good show and they're going to keep wanting to go um to your shows and you're gonna get put on bigger and bigger platforms right if your show is trash you're not gonna get invited to the super bowl i know i just went straight to the top but like yeah. you're not gonna get invited to certain ven- uh, venues and um ceremonies if your show is not popping they might yeah. like your music but you're not showing up you right? might book for a birthday party yeah <laughs> i'm not getting booked for the big stage easy easy and, and three through six I feel like a super rare. He might be talking more about the artist team at that point because I feel like it is very rare to see an artist that is a good networker. I feel like a lot of artists don't even like going outside like that. Maybe yeah. not rare. Maybe it's just I haven't run across a lot of them. A lot of artists I know are very introverted, don't like going outside like that. They don't like going to – you tell them, like, yo, you should go to this conference. I'm not going to a conference. My manager's going to this conference, right? <laughs> like, or my, my assistant's going to go to yeah. it. Like, they don't want to do – most artists I know don't, don't want to do like – the business side of networking. They'll network with artists, like other artists and maybe producers, right? The creative networking all day. But they don't want to go, like, talk to a sync agent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, a lot of them, confidence, I guess, is kind of like whatever. It's hard to tell an artist confidence until you get to know them. You know what I'm saying? I think. Some- so, what do, you, what do you think about when you hear confidence? Like, the first thing you hear, like, why did he list confidence on here in your mind? 
I think the 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 first thing I think of when I hear confidence is the way I think one part of it is like how much you let like outside criticism get to you. Because to me, that's mm. the easiest way to be able to tell how confident an artist is because I, we don't really know them right. So I can't like, you don't get to meet them and talk to them and judge their true confidence, but you can tell by the way they react to certain things online, online how confident they might be in, in whatever it is they're putting out or working on. So that to me, um, I think performance confidence is a big one. But I think this is why in many ways, maybe it's like the Bible, right? It's, it's vague enough. Or, I don't even just say the Bible, like a Bible or the speech in general. It's vague enough for you to just interpret in a way that fits, suits you. Yeah. But to me, it shows him like just having real experience, which obviously is a thing, but yeah. confidence is something you would typically look at as an inside thing, right? Yeah. But he put it on the outside, right? Maybe it's the way it impacts the outside, but a few things there's a few different interpretations of confidence. What you just said, number two, your star quality comes with a level of confidence, right? Yeah, Do yeah. you present yourself with a level of confidence when you meet people on person? You talked about performance too. You mentioned that. That's a different type of confidence. So just having the confidence as an artist, um, like when you communicate and like uh, when you show yourself, when you show yourself to the fans outside of your music main environment, the music videos, right? Your your actual music, the tracks. Yeah. That's what builds the image on another level. Right. It's like it's almost it's weird because even the artists that are like looked at as introverted, right? Or they're not like moving in the scene or they're anti, the ones at the top are still confident. Yeah. Right. They're like they do they have that perception of confident. Otherwise you couldn't give the people who are so insecure, this guiding light. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like it's like, oh yeah, I'm introverted too. And he doesn't like being outside or he doesn't like to be a part of the main thing. Yeah, they relate to that aspect of you, but you're doing it in a confident way, yeah. way in the yeah. way you present yourself. That's what makes it aspirational. So I think confidence is definitely a part of what helps you execute better, but it's also what allows you to have the aspirational level that's in some ways required from your fan base. Yeah. Like you and you can't get that otherwise. So then you also have the likability. Yo, I mean this is when he goes back. We're talking about superstars here. Yeah. Again, you don't have yeah. to you don't have to do any of this. You actually do not have to be a superstar. You can have a career on whatever level you want to, right? But likability, if you want to be on a top tier level, people have to like you, right? Yeah, it's huge, bro. Like, not even like just the fans, you. like like we were talking about like everyday people who are just around you, brother. The yes. grocery people, you know what I'm saying? Your mailman the, or your, the industry people. Yeah, the industry people, right? yeah, like all those people, bro. Like they have to like you. Easy. Or or at least feel like they kinda like you while they're around, you know. And they get talked about a lot. Like I think a lot of artists um discount like how much of the industry is really just like socializing, right? Like we talk about it a lot, bro. It's like mm -hmm. in the perfect world we all just sit in the house, put our shit out, and we'd all be rich and, and amazing, but it don't work like that. <laughs> you gotta go outside, shake yeah. hands, kiss babies, and win people over. Yeah, music is yeah. is one hundred percent like that. More than, you know, many industries. Many I'm not, industries. I don't wanna say for sure that it's the most like that, but it's one of those industries that's socialization heavy. Yeah. And what, <laughs> the higher you go. And what's crazy about it too is like it's like everybody that's a part of the organization has to be social and likable. Like I think about like think about when we went to LA and we had um lunch with like the BMG people, right? It's me, you, Jocelyn, EJ. Imagine if like Jocelyn and EJ was like weird and anti the whole time. Right. It's like yeah. it's like they also have to be just as likable yeah. and social in that situation as we do. Yep. Well, artists and is Nick like was there too. Oh uh, yeah, Nick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like somebody that we brought around us, that we vouched for, has to also now be sociable and likable to a degree. And so with artists, it's the same. But it's like when you go in these situations, like I think they look at like, oh, my manager is the one that has to be, you know, the busybody kind of bouncing around, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies. But it's like, no, nah, bro, we looking at you too, bro. If your manager's working the room, and you kind of like off to the corner, like you know, what I'm saying being weird, like it's gonna it's gonna come back to your operation, bro. You just you just. <laughs> gave me another click in the brain because if we go back to it, remember at the beginning, all right, he, he talks about the artist and their team, yeah. right? What their focus is. I don't even know where that is. Or maybe it was at the end when he mentioned it. Oh, I liked it. Oh, well. But <laughs> like 
So let's also apply this shit to the managers. Yeah. Managers, you gotta go be likable. Yeah. I remember, I can't remember who mentioned this last, but it's a common story, right? Where people will not rock with you because of your manager. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, not even just will not rock with you because of your manager. There are scenarios where I will rock with you. However, I won't work with you because of your manager, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like, I like you, but you never going to find out until that manager is out of your life. Yeah. <laughs> you, you never still know. with that dude? Nah, yeah. It's like, it's like that relationship that is weighing you down. You know, it's like, oh, man, all of a sudden, ever since we broke up, bro, ever since I got rid of her, just all these opportunities been coming <laughs> <laughs> in life. Like, things a little bit lighter. Sleep is better. I'm executing. <laughs> like, it's one of those things. Some managers really can bring that weight. And it's not just a manager, though. It could be many other people yeah. from other other directions on the team anybody right? that's a representation of you anybody that's a representation of you yeah. so it's something to be aware of and then charisma that's just that thing that's that's that extra yeah that's a hard one that, that, yeah, yeah i don't think you can to, teach yeah, i feel like I you can study so. charisma i don't know if you're gonna truly teach charisma nah like, nah i don't think you can I, you know you could be more likable right yeah there's a, <laughs> a a level of training of charisma i feel like that's at the bottom of the charisma spectrum that just means being very likable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the X factor level of charisma, that's 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 a little bit more difficult because it's funny, charisma is like this weird mix when you break it down. It's not just oh he's fun to be around, right? There's some people who are like really funny, always fun to be around, but that's not necessarily charisma alone, right? Yeah. Like there's all it's more persuasive. It's persuasion. Yeah. There's a level of that that comes with charisma. Yeah. 100%. Right? 100%. So then you go back and let's look at the ones near the top. Like, of course, Kanye. Highly persuasive. Right? Highly polarizing. So he's anti-persuasive to many people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's very persuasive to many. Right? And, and he does do it with a level of charisma. You know what I'm saying? He's he he, he, yeah. he, he runs with it. You know what I'm saying? And a huge part of that. Right? is belief. And I think people who don't have charisma on every level at least have charisma in some category, something yeah. that they really know and they care about. Yeah. Right? Because then you have confidence. Most of it comes from the conviction in which you deliver the message. Yeah. That's all it is. And it's funny, I I thought this a long time ago, right? It's like if you believe some something, you're really about it, you have strong belief and and you might be uh, like a little, little less social, right? And and hard on speaking around, speaking to other people in environments, etc. But like, let's just say your life is on the line, or your mom's life is on the line, right? You you can speak a lot more convincingly, yeah. right? Cool. And there's some people who can speak in those categories where things matter. Then there's other people who can have a high level of charisma, no matter what they're talking about. Those are the bullshitters and the yeah. people who are <laughs> at those, high risk of those becoming people are like dangerous. <laughs> those people are dangerous. <laughs> like snake oil salesmen, all that type of stuff. It, that, it, that is a dangerous trait to have. They could be lying or they could not know much, right? Those people who can be naturally good at a sales job yeah. and they barely know the product. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So they don't even have a real reason to, <laughs> to be confident. They just talk. <laughs> and say whatever they say with conviction and then there's some people yeah outside of like sales and business environment that i've encountered that uh they, they're definitely dangerous in other ways right? like, <laughs> they're dangerous in other ways um shoot shoot karens are like that the karens <laughs> yeah mm. the, hey man you know they, they be lying with charisma man I mean, okay I mean. like, oh my gosh He's trying to attack me. He's trying to attack me. Calling the police. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? <laughs> it's, it's the other side of it. It's, it's, that's the other side of it. There, bro, that, charisma is a dangerous coin, right? Yeah, uh, used as a yeah. tool. And then uh, especially people who have it in natural. Gary Vee is one of those guys. Right? He said how he was um, like, if it wasn't his for his parents, he probably would have been like a con artist or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. which means he probably even straddles it sometimes and what he does, he's just more aware and has to like get himself back to the beginning. Oh, 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 I'm going too far. So he's aware <laughs> where the boundaries are. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's, it's, a, it's a natural trait and it's dangerous. Yeah. And you know, as long as you recognize it, it helps. <laughs> it, it, it helps. But all of these things are like really important. I think 
not just for the artists, many of them for the team as well, yeah. right? Like, because let's go to networking. Bam, we we know, like, you're the managers especially, right? They need to be heavy on networking far more than the artists, right? Of course, we talked about likability, but execution, of course, right? To roll out all these things that need to be done, being on tour, all those things that need to be done. And then showmanship, you know, that's a, that's like a little extra for somebody like a manager or whatever on the back end and like how they go about the business and and understanding how to do your rollouts with flair or mm -hmm. let the, in, the rest of the industry know or put them on notice with flair. There's a lot of, you know, we've seen rollouts like that. Yeah. yeah. Or things being done like, oh, dang, the way they move is is special. Yeah, right? Having different. a little showmanship about about yourself can definitely um, take things to another level. Let me see. But is there anything else you want to say on this before we go on to the next topic? Because we got a lot of things for y'all today, especially on YouTube, the platforms on general. There's a lot of updates and ways y'all should be thinking about the platform. So we're going to drop some some crazy uh, gems on those. But yeah, Ja'Cory, before we move on, is there something you want to add on to this analogy? Uh, nothing to add, man. Just shout out to Barry again for 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 the gems, man. You know, he gave us a great great topic. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, always appreciate a, a topic, man. Always appreciate a topic. He, he keep throwing those out, man. We might have to. I'm like, regular. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Make him like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like Barry segment. I got we got to figure out a catchy catchy name for that or something or have him have him on, which would be dope. Right, we could, do, we could do this with a lot of people, so I'm not even gonna say what I'm. I'm not gonna even say what I was about to say. Actually, we know y'all out there <laughs> taking our ideas and shit. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's get into the first platform um, talk, though. Right, let's do it. All right, we got Spotify Wrapped Sound Check. I don't know if y'all have seen this, but Spotify, you know, they do the rap at the end of the year, every single year, where they say, hey, yo, you got this many streams from this many people. You know, they send all the stats out from all these people in, across the world. Well, now they've added a little feature where you can send your fans a video on top of that. And there's a checklist that comes along with that. All right. I got to prepare for it. Got, yeah, they but want the, you to prepare for yeah, it. This year they're making it way more, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Interactive or... No, right. Interactive, yeah. that's the word. Yeah, way that's more the interactive than they, from the artist side than they've made it in, in past years. Yeah. So let's, you know, we'll try to talk about if there's any ideas we have. But to me, it's kind of straightforward. Yeah. A complete checklist of actions you can take now to prepare for the biggest fan moment of the year. November 18th, November 18th, November 18th. Y'all remember that because the stuff we're talking about is doomed before November 18th. Um, but the biggest thing is getting personal with a video message i'm just gonna read this real quick and then jacory tell me your thoughts man shout out to your top listeners for making it happen this year in under 30 seconds record a video to let fans know what their support meant to you in 2022 you can thank your fans tease what you're working on next or tell a story that defined your year upload your video through spotify for artists as soon as possible no later than november 18th for uh, for an opportunity to be featured in your fans 22 2022 wrapped experience on spotify now this is the weird part that in the how to get it done okay yeah they give you the specifications but they say make sure your video has no music singing or lyrics crazy. no explicit content <laughs> no logos or brands and no text, graphics, or filters. So what the hell am I gonna be they saying want, they in this video? They just want you and the you and your voice, man. They just want you <laughs> and your thoughts. They don't want none of that extra shit. Uh, that, that that is interesting. <laughs> like, are they trying to protect themselves from being finessed? Where like I could say, yo, man, all all the artists we know, you know, put a no labels necessary logo in your wrapped up, so then we get free advertisement. Probably, yeah, or like <laughs> keeping you from trying to like sell. The people in your wrapped on something. Maybe that. You know there probably we that, go. Yeah. There we go. Because you're getting out to a certain region. Mm -hmm. That's pro that's the mm -hmm. more relevant thing. There it is. <laughs> there it is. But I mean, this is this is cool though because it's making me think. Um, I don't know if you remember, but it was like a rumor early in the year that Spotify was getting ready to release like a short form content portion of their thing. It's been it's been going around for a while. Where it's like apparently I remember that one. Yes, yeah, so I'm wondering if like if. One, the leak was just wrong, and this is really what that meant. Like, this is that short form thing, or if this is like the the preface to it. Like, this is their way of 
warming up the audience and getting them used to seeing short form content from the artists on Spotify. Yeah. So they can drop that shit. Yeah. Either way, it's cool. I think I think it's dope that they're letting artists actually have a part in the Spotify rap. Because there's like a couple and other stuff. And actually like reach their audience and say something. Yeah, say something. <laughs> exactly. Like that's actually probably the closest to a retargeting campaign outside of like, you know, the Spotify marquee ads or something that you that you're gonna get, bro. Like you can talk directly to every person that listened to you this year. Or listen to you a significant amount to where you in their their rap. That shit's unheard of. I wonder if off platform messages are are like can you be like, yo, wrong. y'all follow, go follow me on TikTok. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. I mean, it, it don't say you can't. It doesn't say that. <laughs> it doesn't say that. Hey, y'all might want to try that, right? <laughs> say yo, because y'all y'all got all these Spotify followers, and, and I, I know a lot yeah. of y'all Spotify followers don't add up to. You know, your Instagram followers, TikTok followers, etc. You might want to go ahead and say, follow me on my IG page. Appreciate y'all so much. Got so much coming out. Da da da. Because I figure I feel like somebody's gonna do that yeah. and they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna cut that out like next year. So y'all might want to get that in the first time around. Sit down, be as creative as possible, and think as many loopholes as possible to this because this is their first time around. There's some loopholes yeah. and some shit that you're not gonna be able to do in the future because because pe- people done capped already. So yeah, yeah. be one of the first cappers. Oh yeah, that's the first one. It's definitely gonna be at least at least fifty R's that fuck it up for everybody next hey, year. Exactly. <laughs> at least the, the first rule of cap is cap first. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, bro. You got you got to be that. So. Like, this is a really dope feature, though. I, I agree with you. And, you know, speaking on the retargeting, it's weird. It seems that Spotify is slowly, extremely slowly, providing more fan engagement channels. Yeah, that's fair. But they're going to remain in control in ways that other platforms wouldn't. So, for example, like, okay, if I got the ability to create an email list from this platform and then i can retarget my fans from the ads um like on ig right i could create an email list and then retarget them there or, or hit them up with an email all yeah. these different things yeah. i could do it at will this, this is a part of your wrapped up your wrap up so that's the only time you're gonna have the opportunity to do that yeah and i, I know i sent that message earlier i don't know if you saw it but i had the little pop-up with uh, Taylor, oh, Taylor Swift. Swift thing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did see that. Yeah, I'm going to read this to y'all exactly what it said. So when Taylor Swift's album dropped, I went ahead and like checked out the first track. Well, I was going to like check. I was going to check out the whole album. I, well, that's what I told myself. <laughs> <laughs> I checked out the first track and I was like, oh, shit, Taylor going somewhere, bro. I kind of like this new direction. I can, I'm kind of vibing with this. I might actually run through the whole thing. And the second track was like, oh, okay. I'm definitely not her demographic. She did. She went back that other direction again, but like, she got it in her though. If she want to make a whole album of the first song, I would be there for it. <laughs> so she said, "You've li- oh, not she." Spotify gave me a pop up saying, "You've listened to ten percent of Taylor Swift's new album, Midnight's. Keep listening." And then there's a button that says, "Listen now." Like that's beautiful retargeting. It is, bro. That is the equivalent of I added this to my shopping cart. Yep. And then I didn't buy, and that's the shopping cart retargeting, yep. right? Anybody in e-commerce and all that stuff, y'all know the value of something like that. So the fact that they're doing things like that and they have the ability is huge, but what's the availability of it? Does, can anybody do this for their fan base? Probably not. Probably, Probably not. not. Probably, Probably not. not. Uh, so <laughs> at what level do you have access to something like this? That's a question. And more importantly, What's going to be downstream to the indies? Like, how much will they be able to do things like this? Even if it's not based on you, right? Like, again, the wrap up thing is end of the year. All right, here's your opportunity. Can they have, they should have more things like this, even if they are the ones who control it. But, like, hey, if you want to have something to provide, under this criteria, if people listen to X percentage and then give them give them a pop up or whatever, and I can't even think of the other scenarios because they restrict so much. Um, I guess well, running ads, marquee ads let you target who right now? Uh, um, you can target like your past listeners or people that listen to other stuff. So like marquee ads are one of the closest to like retargeting ads yeah. in Spotify. So I don't know, like maybe giving more that we can do with that, but. Th- so they they're limited, they're limited, but the, but we know for a fact more than anybody, 
their crossover and the ability to reach a fan base mm-hmm. that's already truly engaged with your music and liking your music is bar none to anybody else. Yeah. So I, I would love if they added more stuff like that, you know, even though I was surprised, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, dang, bro. Like, I can imagine like if I was on somebody else's Spotify and then I got, they got a little pop up and like, bro, you listen to what? You tried to hide it. Like, yeah. and those people might not even want you to know. 20%, man. <laughs> <in. laughs> like, dang, bro. You said we was going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that specific feature, yeah, because it, it feels like they gatekeep it for probably like a year before it kind of trickles down. Because marquee ads were, yeah, circulating like last year sometime, right? Where mm-hmm. they have the, the discover ads or whatever the new one is that still hasn't made its way to everybody yet. You know, still some if you know, you know type shit. So yeah, I'm, I'm we a, had the marquees. How many months before it came out? Before it became like super public, maybe like a month and a half before it got super public. Okay, I yeah. just remember but we had to like ask for it. Like we had to, you know, like yeah, talk to yeah, talk to people, yo, jump through some hoops, and get that <laughs> shit. And then because I tried to get us access to the new that shit, and they like, no. Nah. So I'm like, oh, they serious about that shit? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like that shit, they like, nah, not yet. Oh yeah, I remember that one because I was excited about that yeah, one. Same, yeah, same, bro. Still, I might, I might hit shoot them with a follow email, yeah, see what's yeah. up. So exactly. I'm assuming that you know they keep following that same kind of pathway. We'll be seeing that. Probably like summertime next year. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Maybe around this time next year for that for that same feature. Right. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> next, YouTube, they trying to pay y'all, man. Oh, yeah. YouTube, YouTube trying to keep that word. They, they coming up off the money way better than any other platform. It, it's been like that, not just artists, but any creators, period. Yeah. So uh, it's a couple topics that, that definitely need to be spread you know we need to spread the word when it comes to youtube because hopefully we can influence everybody else and make them and force them give them some peer pressure to the other platforms to start paying artists like youtube is hold up the article's not popping up let's see there we go youtube music youtube music and premium surpass 80 million paid subscribers now these stats are crazy i'm just gonna read a little bit of the, the article uh top line YouTube has surpassed the milestone of 80 million paid YouTube music and premium subscribers worldwide. The subscribers figure, which YouTube says includes trialists, marks uh, marks of 30 million. That part I got to figure out. Increase on the last subscriber figure to publicly be announced for YouTube music, which was 50 million. Okay, so it's grown 30 million in the last 13 months. YouTube's latest subscriber tally means that the platform has added around 2.3 million subscribers every month since September 2021. Oh, damn. All right, this is where it gets, <laughs> this is where it gets important. Elsewhere in the streaming market, rival Spotify added 7 million net premium subscribers to its user base in Q3 of 2022, taking its total global paying subs audience to 195 million, All right? The growth is it's, it's been pretty slow for Spotify um, compared to the beginning, but it's, you know, they're already big. That's expected. Apple Music, meanwhile, announced that it surpassed 60 million subscribers in June 2019, but hasn't confirmed the updated sub numbers since then. Hmm. All right. That's three years ago. But at the very least, we could say YouTube Music has more subscribers than Apple Music did when it last reported. Yeah, which is interesting. I would assume they're probably not too far behind what Apple is now. Yeah, yeah. I would Apple, say that Apple don't really seem to care too much about Apple Music, bro. It's not. A, it's not a focused product. <laughs> the same way YouTube nah. music is for them, or Spotify is for well, you know, for Spotify. You right. Know what I'm so I, I would assume they're probably. If I had to guess, they're probably somewhere between like ninety and maybe one twenty. I would think it doesn't seem like there's any vision there. You know what I'm saying? Apple uh, Music, yeah, yeah. You know, like, at that point, it's just a, a lead magnet. That's what I think of. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think of. When I think yeah. of Apple Music. Hey, come listen to some yeah. music, so we can sell you on all this other shit. <laughs> yeah, I definitely uh, agree with that. My thing is with Apple Music, no, well, YouTube Music. The numbers are ridiculous when we think about worldwide. Let me see. You, t- well, I'll just say this out right. Like, you know, Spotify isn't in every single country. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I remember when I was doing research, we had a client, I think that was China or Korea. So I had to do some research around things over there. And YouTube was the highest listening platform. For so music. YouTube was almost everywhere. Period. Everywhere. 
Yeah, yeah, period. And I was like, dang. And it was, I mean, it was one, it was number one. It was ridiculous. Two, what number two was like some other streaming platform I had never heard of. Number three was another streaming platform I had never heard of. Spotify wasn't even available. And then some of these other countries, Spotify might be available, but it's not even number one. And yeah. it's so crazy to realize how small Spotify actually is in context. Like there's so many different streaming platforms out yeah. there. Yeah. So, I mean, that alone gives YouTube an advantage that no one else has because your reach. So, all right, cool. Paid subscribers, that's what we're talking about here. But actually usage, I, I think- It's probably ridiculous. Yeah, YouTube probably still has them in, in usage. I remember that stat being that way some years ago. Let's see. Um, what would be the question to Google on here? Total- User activity on YouTube, something like that. Ah, let's try to go straight for <laughs> Go straight for what platform gets the most music streaming? I just want to compare platforms. Let's see if, if we can get this out right. All right, so it says Spotify right now. It's the most popular streaming platform. That's the thing. YouTube isn't. A streaming. Yeah, all right. YouTube versus Spotify music streaming. Let's see if we can get a quick little answer. YouTube music offers greater. Oh, y'all trying to do YouTube music. Now nah, I need YouTube. All right. So we'll, we're going to do a, a update on that stat at some point. But with that being said, YouTube also is going to pay for shorts. Yep. That's coming. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Because TikTok still ain't paying. They still not paying. As a matter of fact, I actually heard about this watching it, MKBA. What's it? MKBHD. It, okay, I actually was going to say it right. Yeah. MKBHD <laughs> and Andrew Schultz had a talk. Yeah, it was a, it was the weirdest pairing, bro. <laughs> he was on Flagrant. MKBHD was on Flagrant what? podcast. And they were talking about YouTube. I got to go back and finish it. But- yeah, they were talking about um, the value of shorts and the things that it might ruin. So it, a lot of it relates to artists as well. So one, just paying for shorts is going to be dope. Mm -hmm. TikTok, the other platforms hasn't really figured out how to pay. Meanwhile, I was talking to somebody else who was a uh, serious YouTuber and they were kind of like, I feel like YouTube's trying to figure out how to pay less, right? Year over year over year. How can I pay less money <laughs> for these creators? Because these other people are getting away without paying nobody. Yeah. Right. So YouTube can kind of get away with like cutting off at the top a little bit. Right. Yeah. They went from not paying enough and then they finally hit this renaissance, paying people a lot. And now it's more like, all right, now how can we find some type of balance? Yeah. That's why they're moving so subscriber heavy too. Wasn't it like subscription heavy, right? Like mm. not even just them. I think, I think all the social media platforms are like, hey, these creators want to get paid. Let's put the burden of payment on. The fans, kind of yes. like like tipping a waitress at a restaurant, right? Yes. It's like it's like, yep. yo, what's up to you if she if she eats? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because then we can we can say, hey, we give you monetization tools. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yo, we're not we're not gonna put the bag in your pocket. We'll right. give you the opportunity to to put a bag in your pocket if, yeah. you, if you use it correctly, follow our tips, play the game. We want you to play all this stuff. That's that's why I see it moving, bro. I think the problem with that is for YouTube, like they have found a sweet spot where they truly have become like the substitute for TV in a different way mm -hmm. than the other platforms have. We know people spend some of that TV time on the other social media platforms, but YouTube is like a legitimate like platform in, in yeah. relation to like traditional TV. Yeah, I watch YouTube way more than I watch TV shows, right. movies, all that. Right. Yeah. So with that being said, that advertisement model it's actually most parallel to that, right? Paying for advertisers. These other platforms came from more social media first. Yeah. YouTube wasn't social media. And social media wasn't even a big, big thing when social yeah. media, uh, when YouTube started popping. So I don't know how they're going to do that. But like paying for shorts is going to be so valuable. And they already segmented shorts. I don't know if y'all noticed when shorts came out. Like all them shorts will be mixed in with the, the actual videos. And then it's so hard to find relevant videos. It's like, I don't want to watch a short right now. And I got to go down 20 videos just to find an actual YouTube video to watch. 
Now they have that in a separate tab. You would have mm-hmm. thought they would have did that from get go, but you know they figured it out. They're moving in the right direction. So they're so serious about shorts. They have actually improved the consumption um, rate of it. They are planning on paying. I was on YouTube the other day. I've done this actually with reels and shorts at this point. When somehow, you know, sometimes you just be going back and forth on your phone and you might be off it for a second, you go back to it. Yeah. So I'll go back to my phone and I'll think I'm on TikTok and then I realize I'm actually on YouTube or I'm actually on, on start Reels. Trying, start trying to click a certain yeah, way and they won't like, do what it. what the hell is going on? <laughs> and the YouTube Shorts one was so annoying because I, I had never really been on Shorts on my phone because I always keep the... I had the app deleted for a while because yeah. YouTube, I be watching YouTube. So I'm like, I'm going to delete this one. I can yeah. easily get myself off of TikTok and, and Instagram if I want to. But I redownload the app just to check on some stuff we were doing. And yeah, I ended up in the shorts. And I couldn't even figure out how to get out of it, bro, for a minute. It's very annoying. <laughs> like, that, 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 like, the user experience is not the greatest. Yo. <laughs> like, they're literally going to bully their way through the, the short form content game off of paying out money and and everything that comes from it because the experience is not worth it. TikTok is still destroying reels and, hey. and YouTube when it comes to UX, but Man. everything else, everything else they're getting fucked up about. Hey, I, I believe it, bro. I, I believe <laughs> that they're going to strong arm their way in that game. Yeah. I, I think they are doing better than reels. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah, they're even, doing even, than reels. even this same article, um, like Leo Cohen kind of talks about how like their, their mission is to become the highest paying platform to the music industry. Ooh, I and, like that. And I mean, he talks about, I think, the numbers in there somewhere, but I think they've already paid like $6 billion or something to the music industry. So it's like YouTube's biggest advantage. Oh, actually, before I even say what I'm about to say, he also talks about how like, you know, they're able to do this because they have this very unique model of advertising revenue and then subscription revenue. Um, subscription mm-hmm. revenue from like the YouTube music, YouTube live, and, and then ad revenue. I don't think, I think, I wonder if there's a style there about which platform gets the most Ad revenue, but I'd be willing to bet it's, it's YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Like mm-hmm. maybe Facebook is a close second. Facebook's ad revenue situation, you know, has taken a a different type of toll though. Yeah, because of the, the Apple thing. Yeah, the Apple yeah. thing. So I don't know. That might really be a problem. Yeah. So it's like YouTube's biggest advantage really is like, yo, we can afford to pay off more than these other platforms can. So mm-hmm. you can say what you want to say about the user experience. You can complain. Remember, what year was that? Like 2019, 2020, when all the YouTubers were complaining oh, about- the apocalypse. Yeah, the yeah. apocalypse. They were going to boycott and shit. Nobody left. But it's like, where is she going to go, bro? Yeah. Who, who else is going to pay you even close to what YouTube <laughs> is paying you? Nice. And YouTube knows that, bro. They, didn't love, mm-hmm. they, they think it, but like, where are you going to go? Yep. <laughs> Easy, man. So I'll read that exact quote to what you uh, what you said. Oh, yeah. Uh, in September, when announcing the six billion dollar milestone, YouTube's global head of music, Lior Cohen, pinned the platform's growth on what he called its twin engine of ads and subscriptions. In a new blog post published on Wednesday, November 9th, to announce the new study, the new subscriber tally, Cohen reiterated that the platform's previously stated goal of becoming the number one contributor of revenue to the music industry. Dope. Mm-hmm. Elsewhere in the blog post, Cohen called the new subscriber numbers a monumental moment for music on YouTube and said that its twin engine of revenue, subscriptions, and ads is the real deal i'm so proud and humbled that we've reached over 80 million subscribers on youtube and premium bet so this is dope like to, the fact them stating that they have this goal i actually believe them great pr yeah it's great it's great pr <laughs> for, for one but i believe them and i believe them because of what he said like that twin engine mm-hmm. of those two things so it's one of those things that's like we're best positioned to actually do this and doing it is great PR. So why not? Like there's there's more benefit than just doing it from a revenue standpoint or or a corporate good standpoint. It's like, yeah. hey, this actually works well with our business model overall. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do it and make it known. It's like, oh yeah, we don't have gluten free in our product, but let's say it's gluten free because <laughs> hey, you get clout for it these days. <laughs> yeah, bro. And and they've done a good job of like distancing themselves from like the like streaming platform not paying enough conversation because yes. it's like people it's like i don't know people forget that youtube music i feel like they forget it exists in the conversation of streaming platforms because mm. it's mainly integrated with just youtube right like i don't yep. think of youtube music separately i think about youtube it's like youtube almost in my heart can do no wrong you know what i'm saying like it's, it's youtube <laughs> bro like who else who else fucking with them 
But like they don't even come up in that conversation when right. artists start talking about, oh, why isn't this platform paying more? Why are no these DSPs bumping up the per stream pay rate? They, they, nobody even thinks about YouTube, bro. So they're they're doing a great job of, I think, and like if they keep it the goal, bro, like five years or so, they're gonna be like the the music, the new like music industry like savior. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Especially once like I think artists really start learning like how much money they could make on youtube like they you know we've we've always told clients like bro like the best way to work your youtube is work your youtube like a youtuber like post just as consistently you now we had a conversation about um about ddg that one time about how he was able to build up doing it and it's like bro, i feel like if most artists saw how much money you could possibly make as a youtuber it would Man. completely flip the game bro youtube <laughs> YouTube money is so different, man. So we can't different, bro. stress it enough to you. And I know it's hard when you haven't gotten there yet. But there's a reason why these creators on YouTube are a little slower to like get so hype about these other platforms. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, oh yeah, this TikTok thing has come out cool. And I got a million subscribers on YouTube and all that type of stuff. So I could probably even afford to have a TikTok team and focus on that. Mm -hmm. But one, is it gonna be around? And two, I don't wanna risk making less money on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And even when they do embrace it, they use it to push people back to YouTube, right? Use it to YouTube push is back always to YouTube. the final, the, yes. the the final spot. Because why? <laughs> Like it's like, man, I can make an extra meal just getting even better on YouTube versus what like you well, you can't make money like that on, on TikTok. Yeah. You can make TikTok you can make money using TikTok's audience again and monetize it, but I'm already doing that through YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly, bro. And no, YouTube those, ain't about, I mean TikTok ain't about to drop the bag like that. Bro, those streams that you get paid on um Facebook and Instagram, like that payment. What have you gotten paid so far? Because I still never turned my stuff on. Max at this point, maybe like nine hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, something like that for a total of. I'm probably sitting on my Instagram, maybe close to like four hundred thousand views, maybe between two hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, somewhere there. But I haven't gotten paid more than like you know, easily not more than a band from it. It's not, it's not the worst. And the max is twelve hundred dollars a month for one point two million views. So mm -hmm. one point two million views a month, you can pay up to twelve hundred dollars on Instagram. One point two million views a month on YouTube. Well, well, I would think would at least be like probably at least like three to five bands minimum if you're your uh, what's the, the, the your cost per whatever is, is pretty low. Oh yeah, they're like you talking about the cost per uh like video or cost per impressions. Yeah, like the shit that changes when they. Are you talking about the revenue per per impressions? Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Cause I know that fluctuates and they can they can change how much you get paid, but yes, because also you know. It depends on your category. Yeah. So there's different types of ads ran on different type of people. Yeah. And you know, so the money's a little bit different as well. But I can even say, yeah, in the music space, probably let me see. That's closer to five bands. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Five bands at least. At least. Well, twelve hundred <laughs> on Instagram, on YouTube, I me mean, on TikTok, it's probably like four dollars. <laughs> hey. Hey, <laughs> so that's just that's just a small that's a, that's a small um, example, right? And then we know that some of these people who are doing you know five million, ten million, thirty Crazy. million, a hundred million every single month, Crazy right? Million. Getting thirty bands off of a single video, right? Yeah. So uh, YouTube is the best; it's the only place that you're getting paid to advertise yourself, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That's the way I see it. Yeah. So like, oh man, it's one thing to run an ad. And then you have your cost per acquisition, which means, oh, it took cost me $5 to acquire this customer to sell this $20 product. I made $15. YouTube, you might make $5 posting content to sell this $20 product. So now you got $25 instead mm -hmm. of 15. And yeah. you add that up, right? You know, 25 times 10, that's 250. 15 times 10, that's 150. Yeah. So all it takes to 10 customers already have a $100 difference. Yeah. Multiply that by another 10 and that by another 10, it grows. So you're getting paid to acquire your customers. It's nothing like that. And that's why YouTube, there's going to be another level of focus and attention that continues to go to it. And I know the burn is a little bit slower, but once it happens for y'all artists, like, trust me. It's it is so worth it. It's why these dudes just keep doing covers and stuff like, yeah. <laughs> like that. Like Spotify don't pay me for covers like I could get just paid for on YouTube. Like I don't even think you can be a be paid for covers on um 
No, you can't be paid for covers on Spotify, right? Yeah, it's you like you can't certain, be paid for uh, remixes and samples. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. I know, yeah, I know yeah, what the yeah. covers like. Certain paperwork you can fill out. Right, right, yeah, right, right. Distributor to get it on there. Yeah, I think you get paid a little less. I can't remember what that is. So I have to ask Amir because I remember he, we talked about that last. But with that being said, TikTok is also dropping messages for this subscription game. Let's throw this up on the screen. Bam. Exploring new ways for creators to build their community and be rewarded with live subscription. Now, before I even get into this message, Ja'Cory, what has your, been your experience with the live subscription? Because didn't you turn yours on? Yeah, I turned it on, but I haven't got to go live. And usually I was waiting on my emotes to get done. You know what I'm saying? They just finished up. Over. <laughs> Tell them about that process. <laughs> so, so in order to sign up for... Um, the the new subscription feature. I mean, one you, your profile has got. I, I don't know if they have any like follower or like watch hour requirements for it yet. They they weren't too clear on that. But in order to sign up for it, one thing they make you do is you have to create at least one emote for your profile. Um, so they make you name your subscriber badge. They make you upload at least one emote. Recommended five, but at least one. Um, and then you have to set like what your subscribers rewards are for subscribing. So they give you like. I want to say like 12 different categories you can pick from. You have to pick at least four. So like, I think for mine, I picked like, they could go live with me. They could recommend topics. They could send me their music. And it was something else. But you have to pick at least four of those things. So what's a little bit different with their um, subscription services, going back to the emo thing, they're making sure that you take it at least a little bit serious before you are even to even make it go live. Like it's not something you can just like, click a button and then do it and start making money. It's like, nah, right. like, like I said, bro, I had to go pay somebody on Fiverr to make me <laughs> these emotes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, assuming, I'm guessing if you're someone that has graphic design skills and you can put it together yourself, you you essentially could do it for free, but they're forcing you to put a, a higher level of activity into it just to start using it, you know what I'm saying? Which is interesting. Yeah. That's, that's interesting because, I mean, one, it is a higher barrier of entry, so I guess they want it to be of a certain level of quality. And, have you seen the amount of payment? Yeah, it's per like subscriber. So each subscription, I think, is five dollars or four ninety nine, and okay. then the creator makes. And I could be wrong, and I think it's two dollars and ten cents a subscriber, or or two dollars and forty cents a subscriber. One of those two. Okay, it's two dollars and something cents. So because the the graph they they uh, sent to my email when I signed up was like, you know, if you got like. Uh, 3,000 subscribers, you know what I'm saying? You're making like seven bands a month or a little, or almost seven bands a month. That was a, the graph they sent me. Got it. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, I've seen a couple of credits come up on my For You page that seem to have a good amount of subscribers already. I mean, they seem to, I mean, it's still pretty new. Like, I think they've been betting it for a while, but it seems like they're just starting to roll out to most of the, the. I would, I would consider myself a smaller creator. So, let's talk about the smaller creators. Like, we're just starting to get it. But... I don't know, man. It kind of goes back to like what we just said about YouTube. Like, it looks like TikTok is trying very hard to figure out how not to pay us directly, Yo, but they're giving you are. these opportunities to make money off the audience that they'll give you. Which I, it's like it's hard to complain about it because like, well, they are giving you the audience pretty quickly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you use it correctly, like it's like I, it makes me think, like, man, how fast could I build up three thousand subscribers on TikTok? Or right? how fast could I build up to seven to ten bands a month off of just the subscriber base? But I know what they want me to do, and they want me to live stream on that shit every day for probably a couple hours a day. And that's the part I don't know if I have it in me to do yet. You know what I'm saying? That's the part that I don't know if I have that work ethic in me to live stream like I a mean, true live streamer. That has to. That's a whole <laughs> business model. That's the thing. If yeah. that's not a part of your business model, it don't make sense. Yeah. And that's that's the problem with it. So it's great for people who truly want to do that. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna make really good money off of money. that. Yeah. I can imagine myself, man, if I was. In that space, I'll be live streaming on TikTok, YouTube, yeah, Twitch, yeah. all at the same time, talking to them. Like, all right, who gonna give me the most money? I'm gonna I'm talk to y'all over here. It ain't about no money, bro. They ain't tipping Shut good off. enough. Yeah. <laughs> Shut it off, man. Y'all come over to YouTube. So I it, I can see why it'll be beneficial for creators who want to put that, that work in. The problem is I feel like it's minimal for many artists. All right, we already talked about before TikTok Live is a great opportunity still to get discovered and do some really cool things. And we know many artists that are making good money from just going live and getting those badges alone. Yeah. So I wonder, would that be five dollars? What whatever your subscription price uh pay yeah, so far is. you don't get to change the subscription price. It's just Well, I'm saying like, but your subscription price, but then you're also making money on top 
of that with stickers? Like, would it eliminate stickers? No, like, so yeah, so that change? yeah, so all that stuff, like all the regular live stuff, still applies. So okay. the the um the badges are just for, or the subscriptions are just for a way for you to almost show. It's like the equivalent to the super fan feature on on, on or super chat or super fan feature on YouTube, right? Or, or like the subscribers on Twitch. Like, hey, I'm still a part of your regular viewers on your lives. I just now get a badge and I can use your emotes and I pretty much I get to stand out in your fan base. So you still get your sticker donations. Um, the, I know one of the differences they talk about is like your subscribers get a separate chat in yeah. your in your live, so like you can see like your subscriber chat and then like your regular live chat. You can still get donations from all of them. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, y'all, y'all can't see this, but I had to rig the light over Jacory. And it's slowly about to fall, bro. So if you could catch that before, bro, the light. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> duh. <laughs> it should be cool, though. Like, let's let's just hope it stays right. Let's let's see if the light changes on them. Okay. All right. Ja'Cory, gonna look, it's going to look a little bit darker, bro. You might have to come closer to the table. Yeah, you know what I mean? We're, we're, you know, had to rig the light last second. But, you know, Ja'Cory look a little bit better. You know, the whole background is a little bit better quality and everything in the other episodes. So, uh. Yeah, bro. I was hoping you were gonna catch that. Because <laughs> I thought you were talking about that one. I didn't no. even realize that shit was, was right there. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the rig, the rig has to happen sometimes. It'll be better next week. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, though, like TikTok with the uh, with the lives, I think. I mean, YouTube's going crazy with lives. TikTok's going crazy with lives. Um, who else? Twitch. Uh, obviously, Twitch, yeah. Instagram has the subscriptions. They're not going crazy with lies, but they yeah, are going. They, they got the badges you can buy. They got the badges you can yeah. buy. So obviously, it's a huge opportunity for all these platforms. They see it. They yeah. want to make it happen. Yeah. One thing that artists have to do is make sure they don't get caught up in all these opportunities, because this is why. I don't like doing videos on all these random tools, right? Where people are like, oh, here's a, a new tool where you can build your audience faster. And then here's a new tool. And every week they're talking about a new way you can use gated downloads or a uh, certain playlist or uh, the, the what do you call it? The private groups where you join. Uh, like the Telegram group thing. Yeah. And they all, all like each other's stuff. I, oh, yeah, yeah. Like I, I know what they're called, but yeah. it's, it's, it's leaving my mind for Engagement a second. Engagement pods. Engagement pods, things yeah. like that, right? Because you, if you get caught up in all these different things, you're just chasing, you're chasing, you're chasing, and you're never really getting a chance to have a strategy that you can stand on, yeah. which is why a lot of those big YouTubers also don't just get caught up in new platforms because I'm like, I'm winning, I'm killing it, I'm dominating something. And do I do want to take advantage and figure out how to grow and add more, but it has to be worth it. But if you're always chasing each of these tools that really aren't going to change the game for you, right unless you invest in them and make it a significant part of your strategy you'll just be running around like a chicken with your head cut off and year over year you try 20 tools and you're not that much further along mm -hmm. right where there we know that there's artists who are winning without using pre-saves which hey we've had massive success using pre-saves yeah. without using influencers but we've had massive success using uh, influencers without using some things like the 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 what do you call it the like the toned in links all these different things right they're just tools and they have to have a consistent space and place within your strategy and having all these opportunities sounds good that tiktok does subscriptions oh i can make money on tiktok now and i can make money through you know uh youtube subscriptions and pay uh instagram all that stuff sounds good but you can get lost in a sauce like you can't have subscribers paying on all these multiple platforms yeah right so yeah. That, pl that opportunity isn't as big as it looks. And I think all of them know, like we're playing this game and we're trying to win and figure out which one of us are going to win in terms of the paid subscription socials that people yeah. will be willing to do. That's literally what it feels like. Battle of the, the subscription model. Battle. <laughs> it's a battle for real. It's, it's for real. So you don't want to make, that's why you also have to watch, right? The boat that you're in. Yeah. Because some people might end up dedicating themselves to a model that won't be there. Next thing you know, oh, YouTube, yeah, we're actually sunsetting our program. So this will be the last year or uh, last six months that we're running subscriptions. Um, thank you guys. Yeah, subscribers, you know, goodbye. Well, yeah, but <laughs> we're moving on. We found better ways to serve our creators. You know, it's going to be flipped like that. And you just built your whole business, right? And one that's not going to exist anymore. Yeah. So now you're like, dang, I should have built it on TikTok. So 
that's why it's important these conversations and things that we talk about it's like because it's not just oh can you do good but you got to do good on the right ship because if that ship ain't around anymore then it's like dang you just wasted a lot of effort yeah all right so that's something to pay attention to these are great opportunities but which opportunity is the one to take advantage of and patreon is in trouble to me like they've been really bad for a long time yeah all right they patreon is equivalent to click funnels i know you know everybody might not understand click funnel in their back end but just from my background i understood very early on that what they had was simplistic right but when i like as far as the makeup of the 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 software how i worked and um and it just i don't want to say poorly built because i'm not the best programmer in the world but I had enough experience. I was like, hey, bro, this ain't top notch. Yeah. Right now, that was cool when I first got on, but then the lack of improvement became my issue. They are comfortable. Right? Every single thing that you see on like every platform you join, you see these improvements. And sometimes you'll be mad. Dang, Facebook done switch it up again. I don't even know where to find my ads anymore. Dang, YouTube done switch it up again. Where is this? Where is that? But that's a part of a great brand software company, right? Mm -hmm. So when you don't see that, it's actually a problem. And like with ClickFunnels, I was like, ah, there must be something about how they built it that's preventing them from doing that because it just doesn't make sense how much money they're making, right? And then you find out they're coming up with ClickFunnels 2.0 and it's a completely different platform you got to sign up for, which means, yeah, the way we built this thing, we can't really improve it because it was built on a poor foundation. We pro They probably had some coders who hacked it together. That's the problem with, with tech, right? Those decisions you make early on really do impact things later now on down the road, right? Um, so they was like, dang, you built yourself a prison in a in a sense, right? Yeah. You have low flexibility to truly improve the platform. So like, all right, we got to start over. Now, when you look at Patreon, I haven't used it enough to say that's their issue, that they must have built it on some type of poor infrastructure that keeps it from improving. But boy, the experience was really bad when I used it. Yeah. And I didn't use it until maybe 2020 or 2021. And Patreon had been around and popping for a good minute. Yeah, they've been around for a minute. A good minute. They yeah. were number one in that space as far as I knew. Now, the problem was like, this should not be this simple for where they are in the marketplace. Like, this is just a bad experience. I couldn't, like, the whole community engagement feature within inside didn't really make sense. It really didn't feel like I could truly engage with the community. The con consumption part, didn't really make sense how I navigated that. You get a better consumption in course programs. It's like, I, I could have just created a course and then maybe people we'll pay for a subscription to my course and then drop my content in there versus yeah. being inside the Patreon. None of it made sense. So they have the brand equity out there in the marketplace, but there's something that's been preventing them from actually having a great experience. For, it's, for instance, right? I know a lot of people, their Patreon would be, um, you know, it would have whatever they're they're offering, their content or merch or whatever. But then the community aspect, you would also get access to their private community, but it will be a private Discord. Yeah, they're pushing them off the platform. Yeah. That alone yeah. says y'all are doing something wrong. Yeah. Right? Because that should be a part of your experience. I could assume I could understand that not being in V1, but by the time I had got on the platform and the amount of money they made, that not being there, like said something was wrong to me, yeah. right? So you know, I don't know how many people are using Patreon um, now. I know it's still a lot, but I think there's going to be way, way, way better solutions. There's already way better solutions in the marketplace to me, right? Um, but I think they're going to suffer a lot more. So if y'all want to have your own private community, don't get caught up in the idea of Patreon just because that's the brand name that's out there. There's way better communities out there. The problem that then occurs, though, which is why I think TikTok, YouTube, um, Instagram, Twitch, those will be the platforms that still figure out the way. Because, because the problem with having a private community is your community has to actually want to go to this different platform. Yes. All right. Yeah. And yeah. that's why people have been selling this dream of a private community and paid community experience for all these years. And it hasn't really taken over because it takes a lot of work right to manage all that 
but even greater to change people's behavior where they actually go to that thing. Mm -hmm. And think about there's a lot of people who are like, I don't want to get on TikTok. They still don't want to get on TikTok because it's another thing. Yeah. All right. So why am I going to leave this thing? And the only benefit on that thing is you. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Like that's a yeah. hard sell. And I'm going to pay for it monthly when I'm trying to figure out how to finesse and get out of my HBO. My Month, Netflix account. Yeah, my Netflix account. <laughs> oh, I only bought this because the season of what you, such and such came out and then I'm going to cancel it after that. Like that's a very, very hard sell and expectation to keep people like um, in that loop and, and giving them that type of value. Yeah. So you're better off if you do it right. Building up the equity with your audience and then having sales that are able to capture that value and more because I did a limited merch drop or I did a limited product uh, drop or I did a limited pop-up or, or doing things like, especially for an artist, because it's really hard to just maintain the value of month over month over month. Unless you just got, got people supporting the hell out of you and they you build a culture where they understand why you're not just trying to update it and spending all this time. Because the problem that then becomes, if I'm spending all this time updating inside of the community, then I'm not spending enough energy outside of the community growing my fan base. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So the economics are really, really hard to work out. Yeah, no, that's why I think, that's why live streaming is, taking over because you get all of that in the in the easier to produce package right like i don't have to think about my month over month content because i'm just showing up you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um every every day or every week yep. the community has already been primed for it right like they've had the last five six years of twitch and all these other platforms yep like building them up for it and then like the best live streamers like when you were in their live stream it feels like you're in the community you know what i'm saying like yes. you, you feel the energy of the community so it's like it, it takes all three of those boxes and they're a lot cooler than Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Like Patreon kind of never, to me, never really got a grasp of like the cool, the cool factor. You I know? mean, what is it? Well, the cool factor of Patreon. What the fuck is Patreon? It's a good question. Like outside <laughs> of a transactional space. That's yeah. the problem. Y'all are y'all sold the dream of community, but there is no community features. Yeah. No legitimate community building and curation that can truly happen. It's a space that you can transact with your fans yeah. and get them in this space and give them imp disproportionate value in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and what's, actually, that's a great point. Because I, I, the disproportionate value is what fans want. They just want to be able to show it. And you don't really get to show it like that in, in, in uh, Patreon, right? Like, versus like live streams, like I said, with the TikTok thing, yo, you, if one of my followers uses a certain emote, you immediately know as a follower, like, yo, he, mm -hmm. he, he bought some shit, right? He upgraded. Mm -hmm. Most of the features and things you tend to get in Patreon are stuff that like, like you know is, is, is exclusive or you just got it, right? But like, you're not really able to like flex it to yes. the rest of the fan base. The yes. same way you can on like a Discord or a, a, a Twitch or really any of the platforms that have some type of like live stream emotes, like these icons and things. And so yep. I think that's one of the big elements that Patreon missed out on. And you're right, they should have been in the forefront of that because they, yep. they had the users in the, in the brand equity to do it first. But then Twitch came along and Discord came along. And now the entire culture of how fans fans view a community experience is much different than what Patreon probably thought when they built were well, building trying to build a, a fan community yes. experience, right? Like the user behavior around it is much different than what, what they saw. Yep. And it's gonna continue to evolve and get different because now all the newer fans are being built around live streams and you know what I'm saying, and, and donations and emotes and shit like that. Shit that Patreon wasn't able to get ahead of. Not at all. You know what I'm saying? So not at all. And look, man, it's it's like they pursued a a void in the marketplace mm -hmm. from a branding message. And we witness this all the time. Um, where it's the same shit, different audience. Yeah. Right? That's media, that's marketing in so many ways. You see artists do this and introduce a new audience. The problem is when you're a platform that's building your business off of it, it you're and you're just saying, Hey, I'm gonna give you a private Shopify. Right. Or something like that. Or I'm going to give you it's just a, w a regular website or any type of purchase experience that you already see across the Web, except they branded it. This is for creators. Yeah. Right. We're going to call it Patreon. We're going to we're going to tell your fans that they're supporting you by being in here. All, all of that is just brilliant marketing messaging that took advantage of something that was a true issue in the community, but they actually didn't provide different tools maybe there's something or uh, something small that they did provide that i'm missing 
All right. Or maybe at the beginning, maybe they were a little hit on something. But from everything I know, it, it wasn't really significant. It was just a, a, a great branding yeah. campaign. And you know, first. And hey, that's good enough sometimes for y'all. Yeah. Like, I, just to be real, like if you are the founder of Patreon, shit, you good. Yeah. <laughs> you, made, you made a lot of great money. Yeah, you might have lost in the long run. Hey, businesses die every day. Seventy percent of the Fortune 500 companies that were here on the uh, that were on the uh, the Nasdaq. Now we hear like in the last hundred years, are like are gone. And in, in, in the what is the original one? Like they're gone. Like all these enterprise companies that have done massive things and then disappeared. It happens all the time. Mm. Circuit City was around when I was <laughs> younger, right? This place called Fry's Electronics. I don't know if you ever been there. No, nah. bruh. There was one. There were two. <laughs> uh, in the Duluth Alpha, Alpharetta, but they were like from the West Coast, California. And I, I I went there one time, a few times. So I could sense like, yo, there's something different about the store. I could tell like back in the day, it was lit. <laughs> I could tell, right? And if you look it up, bro, bro, I'm gonna show you real quick, man. <laughs> like this is a this is amazing what they what they have going on. Oh, let me. Oh, I ain't supposed to see that. That's just our our topic list for today, <laughs> bro. I'm a you know what? I'm just gonna show pictures fries electronics y'all gotta see this on the store because we we should have a deeper conversation do we have time for that yeah we might skirt a couple topics because this is a deeper conversation so you see this this story oh, right yeah here? i have seen it I've, okay i've never All been right. but i've seen like the logos and stuff before, that yeah. one look like a, a spaceship oh yeah because they went crazy with the ads yeah. man this one all right so they had crazy production value for all their stores and it was a great marketing and branding thing. Like they look different. There was one, um, let me see, space. They had one that looked like Alice in Wonderland all through the inside. So they had really cool installations essentially. Everything was a high production um, like feel to it, but it was still like Best Buy basically, mm. right? So that experience, especially if you think about coming up as a, like a kid, like, oh man, I want to go there. Y'all got everything, like all the cool electronics, all the, the, um, what is it? exhibitions and demonstrations. Yeah. You can actually play, you know, how you play video games in a store while your mom's shopping and stuff like that. So yeah. it was like, I like this store better than the other stores where I just got to stay on her neck the whole way through. And you got the cool makeup. Like people would literally drive hours away just to like be able to take pictures at that store. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, Cause they were like, they were built different, right? They, they, they didn't all look the same, right? So the point for, for that, like where I feel like the deeper conversation is something that should come back, um, which is not, I don't say it should come back. I wish it could come back, but I doubt it, which is retail experiences. So retail experiences, <laughs> obviously it, the, the, the money's not yeah. there anymore, right? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. But the value that got lost was because there was so much money in it before, people were investing in it. It's the same thing we've experienced in music, right? How music video money ain't nowhere near what it used to be. We're not putting in a million in a video. We trying to figure out how we can do it for a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand is like, this is the best in class for a lot of people, right? Yeah. But because of where it was back then, it made sense to create experiences in the store. I used to go to this place. Did you ever go to Just For Feet? What's it called? Just for feet. Nah. Yeah, it was a sneaker store, bro. <laughs> like athletes foot, foot locker. You want to think about yeah, all them. Okay, yeah, so yeah. they were better. They were standalone. They had basketball, a basketball court in all of them. And I used to be balling, bro. I remember me and my sister were balling on it one time. And then this guy paid us a hundred dollars just so we could get off the court. <laughs> So, because he was like about to run up a bet and play for a game, and then you'll get free popcorn, and then sometimes they have free hot dogs, and they had some of the best free popcorn. And this is just all day, every day. This is just how it ran, right? Oh, that type of stuff was like an old retail experiences, bro. Like they would have things like that. So that stuff is gone. I'm like, dang, I feel sorry for my kids, man. These boring, like, like yeah, yeah. You, that's not the same as just ordering something off of Amazon or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But like the the level of experience that those old stores had is really a great case study for how you can do it for yourself as an artist, right? So again, the more money you make, the easier it gets, yeah. it gets to start saying, how can I invest in this way? But you can think Travis Scott is a perfect case study of 
basically doing what many old stores <laughs> would do. Yeah, yeah. Like, how can I make every single touch point feel like something special? All right. There's a, a store called FAO Schwartz. Um, it was based up north, but like it was a toy store. And I don't know if you ever seen on the news, but that was like the first store and then it was big where like they'll have like that piano on the ground and kids could like jump on oh, the piano yeah, and play. Yeah. Like that was like one of the first stores that really exhibited like that on the like on a like a known level with media. All right. So they had all these cool things that you can go in and go into. And it was like an experience. I think I'm going to have a video about this at some point. Amazon's going to need to do something like this because they have enough money to at least have like staple stores. Yeah, that Amazon are, be crazy. That they are could, cool yeah, as fuck. Do it, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. it, like we, they have some Amazon, re- Amazon retail stores, but they need to have like, yo, this is where all the top technology, it's a really, really cool experience to yeah. be in this store. And it might be like three in the nation, right? You know, it's it's a tourist attraction, a thing to go to. Uh, um, But all of those, if you like really research how stores built things out and like everything's placed so you can purchase, you know, Oh, I'm going to put the milk at the back. So you gotta, you know, walk past you gotta everything. Walk past to everything. Yeah. I'm going to put all these things in certain places. I'm going to make it experience. So you don't mind being here for hours. Like fries, they put a, <laughs> they put a coffee shop in the middle, like, uh, well, or a bistro, a legit restaurant bistro in the middle. So people could be cool spending a whole bunch of time in there because yeah. we they for cheaper cost it would be farther out from the main city because you're getting all this production anyway so it was like dang that would be even more expensive in the city yeah people got to drive farther so we're gonna make it as much of an experience as possible so you are drawn to come out here we have good deals you can justify the drive and yeah. yeah we're gonna make you staying there not just the experience of what you see but you, you can eat too because we know what a hey, what eating does especially yeah. you talking about families who make those trips boy whew, you know it gets real annoying so like bro it's it's something that got lost i don't know how we're gonna bring it back but i feel like creatives from artists or general creatives are going to be a huge part of bringing this back and the people who think indies experience not just a random pop-up because that got like done over and over again in the exact same way Mm -hmm. right it's like oh yeah there's a thing it's like the marketers right it's like oh this cool experience type thing and then then you just exploit it and really don't add much different to it. Mm-hmm. That always becomes a problem. But people who figure out how to create pop ups and experience and events and and things like that that really feel like something like special mm-hmm. for their audiences, they're going to be the ones that win because we we keep talking about the Patreons, the TikTok subscriptions, and, and all that stuff. But how can you take that offline? Yeah. How can I make you feel special offline? What's your badge in real life? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because there's still this differentiation that people have between the real world and the digital world or the physical world and the digital world. It doesn't mean that the value isn't going to increase in the digital world. People are definitely going to get more and more comfortable with paying money online, being in rooms, community, uh, having community, creating real friends. I mean, we know people are getting married that meet online these days. All that stuff is going to continue to trend up. But that void in the real world has not been paid attention to. And we know, right? Like, we'll meet somebody online and be talking to them and knowing for years. And then oh, we make that trip to LA or we make that trip to New York. And then we meet them in real life for the first time. And now I feel like we know them for real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you exist now. It, it, it's still a difference, <laughs> bro. It's, it's still a difference. Like, it, it really means something. So, I don't want artists to to leave out that real life experience because it's it's nothing like it, man. Yeah, there's nothing like it. Yeah, I ain't a lot of the store thing feels like very strong wishful thinking. Oh no, I I 100 percent think <laughs> it's wishful th- thinking from a standpoint of general retail because it just doesn't make sense. The money's yeah, not there. Yeah, yeah. But if you are Amazon, 1,000 percent. Yeah, there is brand equity into it. So <laughs> I wanted to make this video like two years ago, and if I had the catalog around me. Um, see, this is going to go off on normal music stuff, but this is some marketing and branding stuff. So I still think it's all valuable. So did you ever look through the Toys R Us catalog when you were little? Yeah, 100%. That 100%. shit was amazing, right? It was great, yeah. That no, right. So, <sighs> knew I wasn't getting none of it, but it bro, was great. I knew I wasn't getting none of that shit, <laughs> dog. But still, 
the imagination <laughs> just to imagine so i'm gonna I'm I'm get to where i'm going with it in a second but this, but this is a part of value and why where i'm going with it is so valuable because now i give them to my daughter they don't have toys r us you know that toys r us is going i was just about yeah, to ask yeah, like yeah. okay no, they, you know, amazon <laughs> bought them out you know um you know <laughs> Um, they they, ooh, they finessed the mess out of them throughout like the 15 years but so I give her a target there's a target catalog mm. and now Amazon has a catalog right okay. and right. I've been saying Amazon should do this I first thought about it back when my sister used to work at Amazon and the value of it one Jeff Bezos understands the value outside of all that you know hardcore logistical you know numbers all that stuff he understood that the value of a company, um, of a great company, the symbol of it, one of them is like to be liked, right? Yeah. That's partially why they put like the happy face in the Amazon logo. It, they kind of just wanted to be liked, give a good feeling. Didn't really work, right? But I was like, well, one thing you can do, all right, is get to the kids because people don't really, you know, the adults are the adults, man. That's why a lot of people <laughs> be like, man, forget about the adults. I'm going to inspire the kids because the adults already got their baggage, right? Yeah. How do you do that? The catalog experience is a great one, right? And the beauty, and especially the sales aspect of catalog is you actually extend the life, uh, you extend the lifespan of how much you can enjoy something, especially for kids. So, Right. And when you have kids, you'll see how fast they can be done with something. Yeah. They'll play with something. First, they'll start like playing with some stuff too long. I'm like, dang, bro, we're going to get a new toy or like get something else. But then it's like they'll play with something and they'll be done with it after a couple of weeks. They wanted it so much. Yeah. But now if I got a month and a half beforehand to just imagine it, you're enjoying it in our in my head, yeah. right? Yeah. Like this is a real thing because all those toys that I never got, I still enjoyed them. I imagine myself playing with them. <laughs> these kids these days are actually watching other kids play with toys on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. it's no different than us watching somebody play a video game. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sound weird, but then you think back when that them times where, hey, bro, nigga only had two remotes. There were six <laughs> dudes in the room. We got to watch it. You know, it's the same thing. But now that's just translated to a monetized model. Right. So you extend. It's like, oh, bro, if I give her this catalog, she and her mind got like 20 toys. She gets that experience. <laughs> I got her one toy and she experienced them for a month and a half versus just those couple of weeks before even she could even get it. Right. So that's the game. <laughs> but the positive experience of having that with that brand grows over time. Like you immediately, when I said the Toys R Us catalog, you like, hey, man, never knew you, knew you weren't going to get it, but you still went through it. Yeah, Why? Because yeah, it was yeah. that experience, that ability to imagine, right? So there is one. Then you have kids grow up and they have this positive, you know, association with the brand. Other thing. Like I said, many people can't do this because of the amount of money that doesn't come from re retail. If you have these flagship locations that give people an amazing experience, this is Amazon's Disney World in, in a store, whatever that looks like, some real cutting edge tech stuff, some of the best things on Amazon, or I don't know, like what would be exactly in the store, but a combination of like the FOH, uh, FAO, FAO Schwartz toy store and some maybe a more adult version so it's maybe more tech driven or whatever or maybe it has sections so people literally go on tourist adventures to these stores you don't, you don't have to have many of them across the, the, the nation but it's well known so you get this brand recognition stories get created about it again and again every single year things get featured on it so bam you get all the marketing clout from it two most importantly, you get another positive brand experience that you just don't get. Like convenience is great. That's the most you get from Amazon. Just convenience. Mm -hmm. All right. But hey, we know we disrespect convenience. That's why they say, hey, man, sometimes that person and you with you in a relationship, they get a little, you know, they get the short and the stick sometimes because you get so used to them. Things yeah. are so easy, accessible. Got to work a little harder to do some of them other things that you're doing out there. Right. Yeah, you get yeah. that. Better or worse, we know it to be true in many um, in, tr in many situations. So, convenience is great. We really appreciate it. You're going to get our behavior. You're just not going to get our heart. So, create these positive experiences. 
once you have these positive experiences, you also can cap in ways that other people can't, so, which makes it even more beneficial for you because I can see Amazon figuring out a way to not just have the ooh cool brand experience there, but also figure out how to use that extra space for logistical reasons as well. Like, you know, they got the Whole Foods. I don't know if you know they bought Whole Foods. Yeah, 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 yeah. so and then that's why you have those Amazon drop boxes in the front. Yeah. And boy, is it so easy to return stuff from Amazon. It's ridiculous. Great. Like, it's, it, yeah, it's crazy. Give me a cookie on my way up. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So they can figure out how to monetize on top of that in, in ways other people can't. But I'm telling you, man, like, and this is why it goes back to artists, though, as well. Like, the value of positive brand experiences and figuring out where you can sit them within your infrastructure in a way that allows you to monetize is great, but at least break even then monetize off of the brand equity mm. is like, it's hard to put a number on that. You know what I mean? Unless it's within your bricks business structure, you got to put some kind of number on it. But like the beauty of it is you don't have to have it frequently or everywhere in the same way. Amazon would not have to have, stores across the nation in the old school style they could have one in new york one in la or you know or some random place if they want to or whatever yeah. and just make it a thing or, and still get all the clout from it same way you can do that an artist you can have something once a year all right or i mean we can go deeper into ideas on that later but that's something that needs to be taken advantage of i'm telling you bro yeah i'm telling you yeah yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't even know what to, to, to say, bro. I feel like you just broke it all down, bro. Like, I don't have nothing to add to it. Hey, bro, that shit been on my mind for years, dog. I, that could, shit. I could tell, bro. Like, I could tell. That's all I ain't about to say nothing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, man, let's, let's get this last topic out the way because it's, it's time since man. We're going we, we to get to the other ones later. But oh, yeah. Elon Musk, Elon Musk um, drops Twitter blue. Well, he doesn't drop Twitter blue. They already had Twitter blue, but um, they've made some announcements. So I'm going to put this stuff on the screen, but there's some features. Is there a way I can get to that other site where there, we can just read the street, uh, the features straight up? Oh, no, that was that was straight on Twitter. Yeah, that was, that was right on Twitter. Um, so I'll just say this and then we want to, Jacare, I want you to read out the actual features that they're going to have specifically. I know a lot you said was coming soon, but Twitter is increasing the price of subscription service. Moving forward, Twitter Blue will cost $8 per month in the U.S. with pricing in other countries adjusted for purchasing power of consumers in those markets. All right, but what are those features? Yeah, so all of them are coming soon, like you said. None of them are, 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 are super here, but they got a rocket to the top of replies, mentions in search. So tweets from verified users will be prioritized, helping to fight scams and spam. So your 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 tweets go to the top of the feed. Okay. Um, see half of the ads. So you subscribers get fifty percent viewer ads, uh, fewer ads than non subscribers. You can post longer videos. So it says you'll finally be able to post longer videos to Twitter. And then you get early access to some of the other features coming out. One being you can edit a tweet up to five times within thirty minutes. Um, have NFTs as your profile pictures and then upload 1080p videos. Mm. So, but all of it is literally coming soon. None of it is, is here yet. So, what about the verified thing? Because I know that that's what most people, you know, all, all wonder about or care about. Yeah, you get a, you get a check mark. You get the verified. just for having it. So, are, yeah. for people who aren't paying for it, lose their verification. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So Elon, that's why they've been. You know, all the celebrities been bitching at them on Twitter about it, brother, because they they're gonna lose it. We're gonna try to handle this in. Three to five minutes max, because I know I gotta hop off of this call. But what what do you think about that? I understand it. I think he made a good point about like you know, Twitter needs to start making some money outside of just ad revenue. So I and I do think that it will. I, I saw this post this morning about um, how there were Twitter employees who were like illegally selling verification, right? They were mm -hmm. selling it for like crazy numbers, like fifteen k, twenty k. We've come across people who tried to get us for certain amounts and, you know, ask for certain things to pay for. And I would much rather pay $8 a month than pay 20 bands of some person on the inside that might Ooh, not make it happen. And I, can't great argument. and I can't complain to nobody about it, right? Because I wasn't supposed to be doing it anyway, mm. right? So I think it's a interesting step from his end to stop that and to set a new precedent for verification where it's like, I mean, because it's still not like anybody can just be verified, yeah. right? You still have to meet the other requirements of it. Um, or at least the social media requirement or the social requirements for it. 
So I think it's a good step for like how verification should be on platform. Because there's no reason why if I meet all the criteria to be verified, it shouldn't be as hard as it is now to get verified, mm-hmm. right? And so I like that he's lowering that barrier to entry to it and making a little bit, little bit of money off of it. You know what I'm saying? You know, bro, I agree with you completely on that. I hadn't thought about the fact that, hey, man, you know, I'm paying for this anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm paying and, I, and I'm taking a risk when I pay for it. But this removes the risk from that. So I love that aspect of it. And here's another thing I'm going to say for it. So the thing is, this is what it's for anyway. Identification issues. Yeah. Right. So if it's really about identification, people having to pay for it makes it way more believable. I mean, way more secure because like people with bots, people aren't going to really just pay a whole bunch of money month over month over month just to impersonate. Yeah, 100%. Like, so that eliminates that issue by and large. All right. Of course, there might still be ways around it, but it eliminates a lot of that issue. You know, I think we got caught up in this idea that verification is about status, but it's not. The core reason is this is who this person is. Yep. They are who they say they are. Yep. That's why I don't know if you saw the Kathy Griffin uh like they trolled Elon Musk yeah, about changing, yeah, making them fake Elon page, and, and, and they yeah. were trying to make it seem like, oh, Elon's being soft and da da da. Like, no, it'd be one thing if you were a regular profile and you were spoofing them, but you're a verified profile, and people yeah. see Elon Musk and they see the verification. That's literally the reason mm-hmm. that verification exists. Yeah, you violated how that puts some things at risk. So you should get banned. Like, yeah. it's just that simple, right? Like politics aside for it but i think a lot of people don't understand like this is all it's for it's not all this like status and, and cloud and, all, yeah, that shit, and yeah. all of that so i think ultimately it's a good thing um and like you you gave me that money argument i had never thought about that that is that takes it over the top for me <laughs> like shoot it's like if i really want this thing cool because business models for artists creatives you know people in media oh, yeah. those are the people who really need it yeah all right like Everybody else, you don't need it. So as a business expense, eight dollars a month ain't shit. There's nothing, bro. Yeah. Make, sure, so like make sure that all my users know that this is me. Yeah. My customers don't get scammed. I show up to the top of people's feed. Yeah, nothing, Please, bro. it's nothing. 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 nothing at all. So now I'm I'm all for um the the paid verification. And you know, we'll see how this goes. Maybe there's something else that I'm I'm against as a part of this process. But even the features that you read seem like that's just like icing on the cake. Yeah, I'm going to sign up for it as soon as I get home. <laughs> All right, you're going to have to do an update on uh, for us on the next episode. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> All right, bet, bet. Yo, everybody, this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. Remember, you tune in every Tuesday and Thursday. And once again, I'm Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Peace.